Welcome to the latest episode of ENT Critical Targets podcast, in which we look at the ways that engineering, science, and technology sectors can help bring a better future for everybody. My special guest today is Professor Sven Schimp, who is Managing Director of the Fraunhofer Group for Innovation Research in Germany. His work circles around the topics of strategic innovation, technology, and R&D management. It's, uh, I'm delighted to welcome you back because you were, of course, one of our original champions when we first introduced the Critical Targets back in 2021. Uh, your particular category was future mobility, and we'll come back to that later. But for, perhaps first, you could give us your insight into the research landscape in Germany, Europe and beyond. Thank you, Tim. This is a very large question and quite difficult to answer. Um, I would say the research landscape um, got a bit more complex since our last talk. We have a a larger variety of different technological solutions available in um, transportation and mobility. But we have also, let's say, um, developments and progresses that we would not have expected at that time. So um, we see, especially for um, air transportation, we see new options uh, that will bring this topic forward. And I'm quite optimistic that within the next years we will we will see um, elect- electric flight mobility more frequent than we do that today. Oh, well, that that's uh, fascinating. I was going to ask you, of course, about that uh, later in our discussion. Um, uh, but maybe if we just uh, uh, stick to the, the broader research uh, uh, framework as it, as it is at the moment, the, the Fraunhofer Institute is, uh, is one of the largest applied research organizations in the world. Have you felt that there has been a significant change in this sector over the past three years, either good or bad? Because COVID, for example, brought most of the world to a standstill, but the acceleration vaccine science was incredible. But maybe it made the public appreciate science that bit more. But then maybe some of the wrangling between the West and China, the Ukraine war, and other geopolitical issues are making progress more difficult. And isn't it always the case? that research works best if we're all working together? I think this is a good statement. Um, I would confirm that uh, we also think that research works best if we all work together. Um, looking at the past decades, we see um, an increasing complexity of products and solutions through converging technologies and, for example, uh, cross topics like digitalization, um, being of concern for most other sectors. So collaboration is a key issue. And for example, in 2017, in our foresight on R&D and innovation, uh, we said that we expect the intensity of collaboration to grow. And now we have these geopolitical um, concerns, which make life much more difficult and uh, if you look at different countries at the moment, Uh, it becomes hard to collaborate and to keep up collaborating without um, restricting ethical or other um, uh, guidelines here in research and innovation. So uh, we are we are um, struggling a little bit with this challenge, but there are some solutions on the way to, to, to cover it. But finally, me personally, I hope that the geopolitical situation will change to increase the level of collaboration in the future and um, therefore support uh, the development of solutions for the big challenges that we have on a global level. We in the in the UK of course dropped out of the horizon program uh, for a for a few years is from a European perspective I, I, I see it as it was a a big deal for uh, for the UK to become back involved in in uh, that program. From a European perspective, is the input of uh, of British uh, academia and and, and other organisations is is that a, a welcome return? For sure, for sure it is, and uh, we have a long history of collaborating with UK academic organisations. 
Uh, so it was kind of a shock to 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 have this situation not being sure about how to being able to con collaborate. So we are more than happy that uh, the situation uh, changed slightly in the direction here of having a solution for for collaborate collaborating. Still, it be, uh, in our feeling here, it became more complex and uh, it became quite different to uh, to some years ago. Okay. Um, I, what are the areas of research that you're seeing most pro progress in? So AI is possibly the technology uh, that has developed most rapidly over the past three years. Um, you could regard that as a, a technology in its own right or a tool for helping develop other technologies. So how is AI affecting the work that you do? I mean, the, the effect of um, AI to different sectors and uh, working areas is uh, tremendous. And uh, especially in applied research, we see a strong influence um, of AI in all areas, but also in R&D and innovation um, itself. So like, for example, AI becoming one stakeholder in the innovation process, in the R&D process, from requirements analysis up to the development of uh, prototypes, the simulation and testing of prototypes. Um, so far, this is not standard, but um, I would assume that within the next, next uh, even not years, but sooner than that, um, all innovation processes will be fully digitized. Finally, to come back to our foresight on innovation, uh, we had this as one thesis in our uh, foresight from 2017, but it became reality much faster than we expected due to the uh, situation of OpenAI and the development of a prototype that became globally available and was adopted in, in a pace that uh, we haven't seen before. If we were to turn our attention to our specific critical target. I think the category of future mobility remains a, a key issue because humans instinctively want to explore, move around, and global supply chains need to operate efficiently. But are we making enough effort to make transport sustainable? This is again a very good question. I mean, we have different uh, areas where a lot of effort is going into um, developments uh, of sustainable transport solutions. I would say um, in the last decade, there was a lot of effort going into um, research and technological development activities. At the moment, uh, the strongest impact uh, from my personal perspective would be by um, making the right political decisions. Uh, because we have a lot of solutions that are able to make transport and mobility more sustainable. Uh, and we just have, let's say, to, uh, to support stakeholders and uh, to motivate users to adopt these solutions. You should never forget, if speaking about sustainable solutions, that uh, the market is only partly able to uh, to lead to an adoption of uh, sustainable solutions because you have not uh, no no monetization of um, natural goods of the environment and so on so this is always let's say an aspect that should be considered um, and should be co considered beyond um, existing market structures so it it needs some political guidance if uh, we're going to take that next next step and change our habits in the way that we, if, if you look at transport as a product, the way that we consume transport, that needs some political guidance. Yes, and uh, even uh, the adaptation of uh, laws that are guiding companies or stakeholders into the direction of adopting sustainable solutions. In innovation management, it's not always the best um, solution to look into the past, but if we uh, do that for the adoption of environmental or sustainable solutions, uh, we clearly see that uh, political decisions um, are a strong or a key driver for the adoption of these solutions. 
And uh, this should be considered also for for future planning and the future here of um, our environment or our, our planet, finally. Okay. So if we were to look at our, our specific critical target that we set in 2021, we said an airliner carrying 200 passengers should travel nonstop from London to Los Angeles, powered by non-fossil fuel by 2035. Now... You uh, mentioned earlier on that you had seen uh, progress in electric flight. I'm not so sure that I have seen it at airliner level. I've certainly uh, seen a a few small aircraft that have gone across the channel, for example. Uh, And I've forgotten the name of the one that went around the world purely on solar power uh, on, uh, on sunny days in the summer. But in terms of actual commercial level, I'm not sure that we've seen too much uh, progress on that front. We have seen sustainable air, aviation fuel come up along in leaps and bounds, and that could make a, a huge difference to the amount of carbon emissions. I think it can result in a cut by as much as 80%. Uh, so it's a big step, but it's not carbon free. So do you think we are uh, any closer or, or do you think that that 2035 target is possible for our airliner going a, across the Atlantic and across North America? My personal opinion here is that 2035 is a very ambitious target to reach this objective. Um, so it is it is hard to reach and most probably uh, we will we will need some more years until we can achieve this objective and you're completely right i mean we see the tendency here towards sustainable aviation fuel uh, which would solve part of the problem but uh, is uh, difficult to scale on the level um, what we today need in aviation fuel um and at the same time, my comment here concerning the progress, this was, uh, this was more meant um, looking at small aircrafts and uh, short-term fl- um, short-distance flights. Um, nevertheless, I think that um, if we look at the topic area from a broader perspective, we see a strong uh, progress in uh, battery technologies or energy storage technologies. And this might be a game changer here also for uh, passenger flights, long distance passenger flights um, in the near future. And and do you think when I when I asked a question, I, I put it in terms of electrification of, uh, of flight, uh, there, there is are still those people who believe that hydrogen, for example, could be the the, the answer as, a, as an alternative fuel. What do you think? Hydrogen is a very good energy storage by means of um, large quantities of energy with a, a low weight. Um, and it is generally combined with electrification through the usage of fuel cells uh, in combination with um, batteries, but uh, with a lower amount of energy storage capacities. Uh, I am sure that this should be one of the uh, lanes that we should uh, consider for the future here of um, passenger aircraft mobility. Um, So from our perspective, um, it is very difficult to, at the moment, uh, select one technology that will be the future, uh, but we, we have to, to make some kind of risk management and uh, consider different technological options from batteries for energy storage, hydrogen for energy storage, and also um, alternative fuels to being able to reduce CO2 emissions as soon as possible. Okay. So if we were to rethink our critical target, uh, do you think the challenge still stands or does it need to be updated? You you, you implied that you think that the challenge could still stand, but maybe need a little bit more time. Um, But maybe we should be looking at something completely different. Uh, When we spoke three years ago, for example, you suggested uh, we should be looking more at autonomous vehicles, uh, and maybe we should be looking at uh, more at uh, 
a, a completely different public transport system, last mile solutions for personalization. Um, and then there is the thought, do we move away from road transport? This is particularly w- with regard to uh, uh, moving around goods uh, and move that towards rail and, and rivers. Maybe that would be more beneficial and more achievable. There's a huge amount to think about in this this uh, area, isn't there? Yes, for sure it is. And um, if we look at our past talk in 2021, um, this was during COVID-19. And since then, we saw that the human species is uh, very reluctant in in changing habits uh, in the long term. So during COVID-19, we saw a strong uh, reduction of air travel, for sure. This was not allowed. Um, we saw a strong increase of virtual communication. And nowadays, we see that air travel is at a, at a maximum capacity and people are, are traveling as much as they never did before. So I don't think that um, it will be easy to change these habits. But uh, my personal opinion, again, here is that, that we need to change um, the way how we uh, how we collaborate and um, how we use transportation to being able to uh, to achieve the uh, CO two reduction targets um, from a technological perspective. And I'm uh, as a from of a representatives, I'm very much uh, believing in technology as a solution for many of the challenges that we have. Um, but technology is not the solution for everything. So we have to see that from a broader perspective and um, also take benefit from from other, let's say, possibilities like virtual communication, like in improvements in, in virtual collaboration um, to being able to reduce the amount of, for example, air travel and other other transportation and travel um, that that we are we are doing at the moment. Well, I think that's a great thought to finish on. Uh, thank you very much, Sven. It's been great talking to you again. Um, and thank you for all of our listeners for listening to this podcast. This is one of seven episodes in our Critical Target series. You can now listen to all episodes by searching for the ENT Critical Target wherever you get your podcasts or by visiting the podcast section on the ENT website. <laughs>